And then I wrote a poem called You and I uh, that is in this section. And it was really funny because we were at Chapin School in New York and we read this to little third graders and asked for questions. And a little girl raised her hand and said, I don't understand it. And so I called a little kindergartner up. Why don't you be the kindergartner, okay. Linda? So I saw a little girl and I said, let's see if you can understand it. The title is You and I. And I had a nice little paper easel, uh, easel there. So I wrote you, Y-O-U, so the children wouldn't think it was just a U or an E-W-E. -E. And someone else raised their hand and said, or it could be ew. <laughs> and I said it wasn't that. And then I was I, the one letter I, not E-Y-E. -E. We had to get that straight. So the poem goes like this. Only one I in the whole wide world and millions and millions of you. But every you is an I to itself. And I am a you to you too. But if I am a you and you are an I, then the opposite also is true. It makes us both the same somehow, yet splits us each in two. It's more and more mysterious the more I think it through. Every you everywhere in the world is an I. Every I in the world is a you. So with the little girl, um, I got her name. So you can, what's your name? Linda. Your name's Linda. And my name's Mary Ann, right? So only one I in the whole wide world. Mary Ann, right? And millions and millions of you. But every you is an I to itself. And I am a you to you, too. And then, how did we do this? The, then she, she, did she do the next part? We got it very established that she was an I, and I was a you to her I, and I was an I, and she was a you to my I. And, and by the end... Well, then you got the whole group. There must have been yeah. 60 children sitting on the floor. Um, and they began to read it as well. Yes, and they, and they got it. And it was so funny, th this poem, I recognize many times children don't get poems, even that sound very clear to us, mostly with puns. Kids take a while to get puns. But this one I was kind of surprised, and we thought this little girl was very gutsy to stand up and say, I don't get it. But when we did this thing with little whoever it was and me, by the end, it was all very, very clear. And this is one of my favorite poems that I've ever written. I kind of like this poem because I puzzled about this. It's out of my earliest childhood. This was one of my puzzles. Anyway. There's also some, there are some very sophisticated poems that we've tried with fairly young kids. And they are amazing in what they can quite quickly, immediately almost, understand. I am the family face. Yes, yes. Well, we mixed, we mixed adult and children's poems in here. We didn't make any distinction. We have comments on them to kind of bring you into the poem if it might be a little difficult or a little hard to understand. As I said, there were nine sections moving right through the, from fossils and rocks through flora and fauna, etc to the last section, which is um, Christina Rossetti's Hurt No Living Thing, that is, and uh, a glossary that mixes up scientific and uh, literary references, biographies of the poets. As I say, it is just the book I would have loved to have had when I was a little girl.